Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril and you asked for it, so we're pushing it ahead of our schedule. We have the new Faramir Ranger model from the new Osgiliath starter set. This model is absolutely beautiful. We couldn't wait to get this painted up and we can't wait to give it to you guys as one of the most hotly anticipated tutorials of 2023. We opted to give our Faramir the Osgiliath ruins because it fits what we're going to be doing with him for our gaming purposes. But there is a woodland scenery bit in the box if you want to go for a pure woodland themed Faramir. But as always, our model was mold line clean and assembled using plastic glue. We cut out some individual cobblestones and glued them down to the base with PVA glue just to better mirror the look of the uh, patchwork cobblestones of Osgiliath. We then coated the rest of the base in fine modelling sand. And once this was all dry, we sprayed our Faramir with Chaos Black Undercoat ready for painting. We're really excited to have this video for you today. And we really hope you enjoy today's offering. Please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Base colours. As always, we're going to start with Bugman's Glow and carefully base coat Faramir's face and neckline. Not worrying too much about the beard at this stage, we'll worry about that in a moment. We can use a mix of Mournfang Brown and Rhinox Hide and apply this as a base coat to his hair and beard. Now we can use a mix of Pastacham Flesh and Dry Up Bark and apply this as an all over base coat to his Ranger tunic, making sure we get the arm sleeves and the areas that hang down just below the belt of the waist. The cloak was painted in a three part mix of Castellan Green, Caliban Green and Rhinox Hide. And we applied this to the cloak on the inner and outer in a few thin coats to make sure we got a nice smooth coverage overall. This is also applied to the skirt that hangs down below his waist. The beige trim on his tunic was very carefully picked out with a mix of bane blade brown and steel lesion drab. This was also applied to the undercloth just underneath his brace on his forearms and the cloth on his elbows. On the forearm braces, the scabbard, quiver and any other areas of black at the stage were painted with a mix of Abaddon Black and Incubi Darkness. Our final base coat area was the gloves and the boots which are base coated with a mix of Rhinox Hide with a little bit of Abaddon Black in there just to tone it down to a more natural leathery look. Face. We'll be using our standard progression through human skin tones using Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh for the bulk of the highlights, toned down with Rightlin Flesh Shade as and when. To start off with, we've blocked out the main details of the face with a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone, being careful to leave a nice defined line around his beard and jawline. Once we're happy with our blocking stage, we applied a wash with Rightlin Flesh Shade, thinned down with a little bit of Lamia Medium. Once the wash is dry, we layer it up using the previous mix, adding more Cadian Flesh Tone until we're layering up with pure Cadian Flesh Tone before we get to the highlighting stage. With this sculpt of Faramir, we focused on picking out the lines in the furrowed brow to add a bit more character to this sculpt. We started highlighting the face now with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone mixed with some Kislev Flesh in an approximate 2 to 1 ratio. I'm just further pushing those nice defined areas of facial detail and working our highlight towards the most pronounced areas 
the skin. By the time we reach the final highlight, we should be using pure Kislev flesh and we're applying this just as a very quick edge and spot highlight to the most pronounced areas of flesh, just to really accentuate his facial features. He's Faramir, he has to show his quality, even if it's only in his brow. And to tie all these layers together, we applied a very light glaze of Riken Flesh Aid just once we finish all the highlighting stages. We followed our usual stage for eyes, painting in the recesses with Abaddon Black, and then carefully picking out the pupils with two dots of Pallid Witch Flesh either side. Hair and Beard We'll be working our way up through Scrag and Deathclaw Brown to capture that characteristic orangey hue to fire his hair and beard, with some Dawn Yellow added at the end to add depth and tone throughout. To start off with, we applied a Vanyal shade all over the hair with pure Katachan flesh. And before we applied a wash, we applied another layer with pure Mournfang Brown. This time, at this stage, we're looking at blocking out the beard, adding a small bit of texture by feathering this onto his jawline, and trying to feather this on as best we can over the hair and blocking out those larger areas, leaving the manual shade showing in the recesses. Once you're happy with the blocking stage, a wash was applied to the hair and beard, being very careful not to apply this too vigorously so as not to bleed out onto the finished facial details. Now we continued layering up the hair and beard now by using pure scrag brown, leaving the wash and the previous layers showing in the recesses, focusing on creating more definition and accentuating our previous feathering layer with tighter, more controlled strokes. working our way up to a 50-50 mix of Scrag Brown and Deathclaw Brown for the first highlight stage. As you can see we're looking at creating more definition and more flow between the recessed and lighter areas of hair and focusing on areas such as the crown of his head and the larger more prominent curls that flow down along his shoulders. When we reach the penultimate highlight stage we should be using pure Deathclaw Brown. Now we're looking at just very carefully, just accentuating those most prominent areas of hair and beard. And finally, a dot highlight was added now, predominantly to the beard and the moustache to accentuate these, but also to the most prominent areas of crown and to frame the face a bit more with a mix of Deathclaw Brown and Dawn Yellow in an approximate two to one split. We don't want to overblow the Deathclaw Brown by adding too much Dawn Yellow, so about a third will work for this stage. Finally, we applied a glaze to tie all these layers together with Seraphim Sepia. What a lovely mane you have, Faramir. Ranger Tunic. There's a lot of areas to this tunic. For the main bulk of it, we'll be working our way up through Katachan Flesh, Night Quester Flesh, and Kislev Flesh, as these give a very natural and muted tone which we want to capture for this leathery tunic. To start off with, however, we're going to apply a manual shade with Galvor Back Red mixed with a little bit of Abaddon Black just to the recesses and all the grooves in all the leather. The tunic was then given a thorough wash with Agrax Surf Shade. At this stage, we're not looking to try and capture the beige areas at this moment, just purely focusing on the dark, rich browns.
Once it is dry up, we apply the 50-50 mix of Kachan flesh and Blood Reaver flesh and start layering up the bulk of the tunic. Leaving the Galvor back shade and the Agrak third shade wash showing in the recesses. Keep adding Blood Reaver flesh until you're layering now with pure Blood Reaver. At this point, particularly around the arms, you're looking at just defining the segmentation in the leather and picking out the most pronounced folds and creases in all the material. You can start adding Night Quest or Flesh into the mix until you're working your way up to a pure highlight stage of pure Night Quest or Flesh. Again, focusing on depth and shadow where appropriate and creating a really nice washed out sun bleached leathery look to this tunic. And finally, an edge highlight of Night's Quest or Flesh mixed with a little bit of Kislev Flesh or apply to the tunic just to make it pop that little bit more. These hues and flesh colours really complement the base coat colour we've used and give you a really nice natural look once we've finished. The tunic was then glazed with Agrax Earth Shade to tie all these layers together. We're getting there Faramir, we're getting there. We worked our way up through Screaming Skull and Pallid Witch Flesh for the beige areas of tunic and grey sear on white skull was used to pick out the tree insignia on his front. To start off with however, we applied a layer to the beige areas of the tunic and the cloth on his arms with Baneblade Brown. We didn't want to apply a wash here at this stage because we thought this would tone it down too much and it wouldn't look natural once we finished because we're using quite natural pastel colours here. We then apply the layer with a 50-50 mix of Bane Blade Brown and Screaming Skull, leaving the previous layer showing through as we work our way up to the edges and most prominent folds in all the material. When you're happy with how this is looking, you can start adding Pallid Witch Flesh and apply this in as many separate layers as you wish. At the point at which we reach the final highlight stage, your mixture contain no more than approximately 50% Pallid Witch Flesh to the previous Bane Blade Brown and Screaming Skull mix. Now for the finicky bit. Now we're very grateful with this new sculpt that the detail is actually moulded onto the model, rather than being recessed detail as it was on the old metal one. But very carefully and with a really good point to your brush, pick out the white tree insignia on the front of Faramir's tunic with grey sear. We then applied a very quick highlight with a 50-50 mix of grey sear and white scar. Ranger cloak and greens. We'll be working our way up using some messy desert, and old green camo and nerdling green to do the bulk of the work for the greens for us here. This will give us a really faithful look to his cloak from the films. To start off with, we applied a manual recess shade with a mix of Caliban green and Rhinox hide. This complements the original base coat mix and doesn't overblow it too much by making it too dark or too rich. Now I'm going to very carefully layer over all the greens and block out our initial layering stages now by adding approximately 25% of the messy desert to the original base coat mix. Trying our best to leave the manual shade showing in the deepest recesses, the more careful we can be at our blocking stage here, the better our cloak will look once we're finished. We increase the amount of Zemesi Desert in the mix to an approximate 2-3 to three split between Zemesi Desert and the green base coat mix before we got to the next highlighting stages using the more pastel -y and brighter hues. So we built this up very slowly over a couple of layers to really get a nice natural progression from the pastel -y greens we're using to begin with through to the more 
bright and vibrant colours we're about to be using for the highlight stages. Now we've started adding Og Green Camo to the previous layer mix until we get to an approximate 50-50 split of Og Green Camo to the previous layer mix. In the East stage we're looking at pushing the definition and further defining this very well sculpted cloak and all the folds and details in all the material. The Og Green Camo, if added gradually, will give a really nice transition between the pastel-y Castellan Green and the richness of the, ca of the Caliban Green and gives more of a woodland feel than the paint schemes we've used for our other ranges. For the final couple of highlight stages now we're going to start adding in Nerdling Green and again just looking at pushing these highlights tighter and thinner and creating a nice natural transition between the darker recessed folds of cloak to the lighter areas we're now focusing on. And again as I say make sure you add gradually because the last thing you want to do is overblow the cloth too early and add too much of a lighter hue and completely undo all the work we've done. working our way up to an approximate 50-50 split of Nurgling Green and the previous layer mix. Again, add this as gradually and in as many layers as you want because the more layers it means the more natural the transition will look from the darker to lighter areas of cloth. It minimizes your risk of overblowing the hues and colors of the base layer greens. quiver, scabbard and braces. I'm just going to be using all thrown grey and non oil to do the most of the work on these black areas for us. Start off by applying a layer to the scabbard, belt, braces and quiver by adding all thrown grey to the previous Abaddon Black and Inky by Darkness mix. Increasing the all thrown grey to an approximate 50-50 split for a second layer stage. And finally making it a 3 to 1 split in favour of all thrown grey for the final highlight stage here. We're using all thrown grey here for this as we want to create some differentiation between these areas and the trousers we're painting in a minute. Once you're happy, we apply the glaze of Nun Oil to tile these together and just add in some more shadow into the recesses of these black areas. Trousers. These were simply painted with Storm Vermin Fur doing the bulk of our work at this stage. Uh, we started off with a base coat of Abaddon Black and Storm Vermin Fur just to paint in the trousers above the boots. We're using this mix to create some nice differentiation between these and the other areas of black on the model. He's then given a thorough wash with some non-oil just to add a bit more depth. We started increasing the amount of storm vermin fur in the mix gradually and in separate stages for the following layering and highlighting stages. leading to a pure edge highlight of Storm Vermin Fur once we've worked our way up for a couple of layering stages just to define these that little bit more. Boots and Gloves Again we're keeping it quite simple for the boots and the gloves using Knight's Quester and Carrack Stone with Agrax Earthshade to do the majority of our work for us. To start off with, we tried to recapture that leathery look to the gloves and boots with a thorough wash of Agrax Earthshade.
The boots were then layered up by adding a small amount of Knight's Crest or Flesh to the previous Rhinox and Abaddon black mix, focusing on blocking out areas of the fingers and the large areas of boots, leaving the wash showing in the most defined recesses. Once we're happy with the blocking stage, we started adding in Karak Stone in small increments to kind of wash out the browns a little bit and give more of a leathery, uh, beaten look and texture to the to the well-worn boots and the well-worn gloves. further increasing your character stone concentration to about two thirds for the final highlight stages. And again, this will just help to wash out those really rich browns we used originally and give more of a worn, well lived in look to these leather areas. Silvers and gold details. We're using lead belcher and iron breaker to do the bulk of the work for our silvers. Start off by painting the sword blade, pommel, any buckles and rivets and the very intricate design down the back of the quiver with a nice strong coat of lead belcher. This was then given a wash with null oil, thinned down slightly with lime and medium making sure any excess wash was wiped off of the larger flatter areas to avoid any unsightly blemishes once dry. All these metals then were given a very quick edge highlight with iron breaker just to give them a little bit of sharpness and a little bit of shine back. We'll be using a progression through Sycorax Bronze and Canoptech Alloy to paint in the gold and bronze details. We basically coat the hilt of the sword, the neck brooch and any other gold details on the model with Rune Lord Brass. Applying a very quick layer with Sycorax Bronze. This is quite a muted washed out bronze which complements really well with the muted washed out colours we've been using so far, making sure to catch such areas as the scabbard decoration and the details on the belt. All these bronze areas were then given a wash with Agrax Surf Shade thinned down a little bit with Lamia Medium. We do love our Lamia Medium here. We finally applied a very quick edge highlight of Canoptech Alloy just to frame these bronzes a little bit more and apply a nice little glint of reflection. Again, this washed out look to the gold really helps complement the hues and tones we've used for the browns and greens so far. Finishing details. We base coated the strap, the arrow tips and the bow on his back with dry bark. We then applied a quick edge highlight to all these areas with Gawthor Brown, as well as carefully applying the freehand wood grain effect down the length of the bow. I'm going to be using a rich brown method to paint the fletchings of the arrows. We're going to start off with a base cut of XV88 over all the fletchings of all the arrows in the quiver. Followed by a quick layer over with Baylor Brown. and a very careful dot highlight 
with a mix of Ballard Brown and Pallid Witch Flesh. Ruins. So we're going to be working our way up with a Gracie and Rakar base through Pallid Witch Flesh and White Scar to paint the Oscillia's Ruins. To start off with, we're going to use a mix of Gracia and Rakarth Flesh and apply a thorough base coat to the Oscillia Thurins on the base. You will need to apply this in a couple of thin down layers to get a nice smooth finish, particularly if painting over a black undercoat as we are here. And then applied a coat to the, all the ruins and some thin down contrast basilicanum grey. Once this was dry, we applied a very thorough dry brush, adding some pallid witch flesh to the previous Gracia and Rakarth flesh mix. Be careful here trying to beat out onto the finished fan model. Appreciate it's very hard at this stage because we're trying to get all the ruins covered, but with um, a targeted enough dry brush and enough control, you'll have no problem covering just the ruins with this stage. And then increasing the amount of pallid witch flesh in the mix for the following layer stage should give you a nice an authentic Oscillia stone effect if applied in the right manner. And then followed by a very light dry brush over the top of it all with pure white scar just to pick out the very edges and make those ruins pop a little bit more against our against our Faramir. Our Faramir was then based according to our Grassland theme tutorial, which you can find on the channel. A chance for Faramir, Captain of Gondor, to indeed show his quality and it is of the very, very highest. 